uh, Madam Chair, I commend this bill to the House. I call Lois a war. Um, I'd just like to start with some international context for this piece of legislation and then relate it back to Aotearoa New Zealand. So there are groups internationally called Girls Not Brides, In Child Brides, uh, and their definition of child marriage is any formal marriage or informal union where one or both of the parties are under 18 years. Each year, that's 12 million girls. That's 23 girls every minute, nearly one every two seconds who are getting married. Uh, in New Zealand, that equates to approximately 80 child brides a year. Uh, and of interest, uh, 388, or 48.6% of those uh, women, uh, actually are married overseas. And they come into, their, into the, our country uh, and so, actually, in addition to uh, this whole issue about child brides, we also have issues about the immigration status of those women, uh, what happens to a number of those women if they end up in domestic violence situations. And so, uh, that's been another issue that we have been pursuing as the Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians. So, globally today, there's 700 million women uh, who were child brides. Uh, of those, 250 million were married before 15 years of age. And I think we all should think about what happens to those women who are married. What happens to them is that they are at risk of violence, abuse, exploitation for life. And 60% of the babies born uh, to those women actually... Um, oh, sorry, of the babies born to women uh, who, have, who are child brides, 60% of their babies are at greater risk of dying in the first year of life. Um, New Zealand's, I guess, contribution to this international campaign uh, did start in 2010, uh, and the Honourable Maggie Barry is 100% correct that uh, Jackie Blue engaged with Shakti. So I too want to acknowledge my colleague Priyanka Radhakrishnan, who was working uh, for Shakti at that point in time. But some of us may not know, but there was a John... Hudson Sunday story uh, that did a big expose about this issue in New Zealand. And there were 12, 13, 14, 15 year old girls who were being married in New Zealand. And for one of the, in, in cultural and religious marriages. And one of those uh, young women, a 14 year old, uh, she'd been raped. Uh, and uh, her parents made her marry her rapist. Uh, she suffered torture, beatings, isolation. She escaped and was seeking refuge with Shakti. And we started then having this discussion because Shakti then engaged with people like Jackie, who talked to the National Council of Women, a whole lot of other people. I have tried to look back when we first referenced this to the UN, but actually this issue is relevant in New Zealand. And so uh, our uh, contribution to this global campaign of Girls Not Brides Ending Child Marriage uh, is incredibly significant tonight. And I do want to acknowledge that this has been the one and only to date piece of legislation that we as parliamentarians across the House have agreed on. And so, Joe, I want to commend you as the co-chair of our CWP group, but also uh, as somebody who put her name to this bill doesn't matter how you got it, although I think that inheritance is a, is a great legacy, uh, but the fact that this, is, this bill is in your name and you were incredibly passionate about advocating it, uh, not only within your party, but uh, across the House, and I know you've done a number of media, media interviews about uh, what we're trying to achieve. So essentially what we're saying is that marriage actually should be between adults, but in lieu of it being between adults, because in New Zealand uh, we do allow 16 and 17 year olds to get married, uh, because of the issues of consent and the issue of coercion, and the fact that uh, from the evidence that I talked about just, um, just before, we know that some parents are making their, child, their, ch their girl children marry people, older people. And so there is an issue. And so what this process will ensure uh, is two things. One is informed consent, so that the judge has to be convinced that that 16 or 17 year old girl, young woman, uh, absolutely knows what she is entering into, into wanting to, 
to marry someone else, and that, that judge will determine, based on that interaction, whether or not that young woman wants to get married and has the capacity to give informed consent. And why do we do that? Because of some of the harms that I outlined earlier. Because there, this, I have to say, I've been at some events, though, where women have come up to me and said, I got married at 16 and I've had a wonderful marriage. And that's fine. That's great. We're not trying to stop it, which was actually one of the big discussion points when we presented to the Select Committee. If we really wanted to end child brides, why aren't we saying you can't get married? And one of the reasons that we said we couldn't was that was a, that was a big change, you know, because that went back to 1955. Uh, but we felt that by adding a layer uh, of uh, credibility into the system where a judge through the uh, family court could make the determination about that young person giving informed consent, therefore uh, assenting to uh, the application for a marriage licence, we felt reassured in that process and that uh, that would also guarantee that no harm would come to that young woman. I also have to say that the other uh, advancements uh, in this piece of uh, legislation that the Select Committee actually have been incredibly helpful on is saying it's not just marriage, uh, this also applies to civil unions and also to those who are in de facto relationships. And I guess that um, really highlights, uh, the, again, the constructive process that our uh, Select Committee engages in, because we were able to have those discussions people were able to bring to the table uh, pieces of information that actually we just hadn't considered. Because, you know, in other legis legislations around the world or in other democracies, they only have marriage. They don't have civil unions and, or formal recognition of de facto relationships in their laws. Um, just finally, I, I do want to pick up on uh, one of the points that uh, my colleague, the Honourable Tracy Martin, talked about in terms of this whole concept of a multi-member bill. Now, the multi-member bill concept came about because as a cross-party group of women, we were thinking, how can we get this bill into the House? If everyone agrees with it, uh, we didn't have a minister who was prepared to, to propose it, but uh, we thought, how can we do it? Obviously, we had somebody put their name and it was in the ballot. Uh, but I consulted Mary Harris, the then clerk of the House, about how we could uh, enter a multi-member bill uh, into the parliament. And the way that we can do it, as just no one has ever done it, is for if we had a bill that we all agreed on, every political party in the House would nominate one of their members for their name to be on that bill. And if every, uh, uh, Madam Chair, and if every political party did that, we would then seek the leave of the House for that bill to be tabled. Uh, and then it could be debated. The fact that it's never happened before doesn't mean that it can't. It actually just means we haven't found the right bill. And so I guess uh, our experience from this uh, cross-party endeavour is let's try and find a, a bill where we can find every political party supporting and we all put one person's name on it and we agree as a House for that bill to be tabled in this parliament and let's create, it's funny, you know, consensus around really important issues like this one. And so that's the challenge to all of us. Let's start thinking of some bills uh, that we all think are incredibly important, uh, might not be on ministers' work programs, but rather than put it in the members' ballot, uh, let's see if we can work constructively as a parliament. So just finally, uh, I do um, want to uh, commend Jackie Hopefully she's watching. I know you won't mind, Joe. You know she she will be interested in what's happening. I I really just, just I, I just want... encourage a member to um, use the sponsor's full name. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Dr. Jackie Blue, wherever you are, I'd just like to say that this bill uh, has progressed to this point because you were able to um, not only work with the community to construct the bill. Uh, not only did you have somebody in your National Caucus who was prepared to take it on, uh, but also when you'd left, you came back to the Cross-Party Women's Group and talked to us about 
this being a piece of legislation that we could work on together, uh, which we have done. And so, without further ado, I commend this bill to the House. Kia ora. I call Jan Logie. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, it's a great pleasure to rise and add the Green Party's voice of support.